YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name's Ashley and I am the mompreneur here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to crochet this super cute dinosaur themed backpack. It is a drawstring backpack and it's got the little straps and then you can pull this and close it by tightening them just like a regular drawstring backpack. You can find this guy on my blog, Fully Photographed, if you prefer to look at pictures instead of watch a video. Um, and you can also download your own PDF version of this guy so you can keep it on your computer or print it out and look at the pattern on actual paper instead of digitally. That's available in my Etsy shop for only $3. This super fun design was actually a part of a challenge that I did with my friend Taylor over at Taylor Lynn Crochet. We do um, a bunch of challenges together and we have a group Facebook page called Ash and Tay Crochet. And it's just a community Facebook where other makers can get together and talk about what they're making and ask business questions and talk about what's working for their businesses and stuff like that. Um, also, they're more than welcome to pr promote their businesses. So if they come out with a new pattern or something that's where the Ash and Tay Crochet Facebook really comes in handy uh, but this is going to be over there as well we did a challenge to see who could create the coolest dinosaur themed birthday pattern because my daughter's birthday in two weeks is Dino 4 she's turning four years old um, all the stuff about that will also be on my blog if you're interested in a Dino 4 birthday party I will link that below when it's available it will be available after the birthday party um, but there will be patterns and stuff on that as well. This guy is super easy to make for the most part. It is a little time consuming. It's made with all single crochet, so it takes a little while. And the straps are made by making eye cords. So if you've never crocheted an eye cord before, it might take you a little while to get the hang of it. But I go over it very slowly in the video, and I also photographed every step in the pattern. So hopefully you guys can get this figured out and make some super cute dinosaur backpacks for yourself and your kiddos. Oh, and your Etsy shops. You can sell the fire out of these things. I'm, I'm totally, totally pro selling things that you make from a crafty concept patterns. Okay, enough jibber jabbering. I'm not even going to waste any more of your time and we're just gonna hop right into this pattern. Okay, first we're gonna start by making the body of the backpack. And this is one piece I already did. And we are going to start the other one together. I just wanted to show you what it's going to look like when we are finished. It has this area through the top for the drawstrings to go into and then the rest is the body. We are going to need our 4.5 millimeter crochet hook for the front and back pieces. Pull out some yarn. And the pattern says to make a slip knot and chain 41. Slip yarn. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. Now it says to single crochet in the back bump starting in the second back bump from the hook. So normally when you single crochet, these are the loops that we go under. This is the front loop and this is the back loop. And you can see that V on the top of your stitches. We are going to rotate it over and we will be putting our stitches into these little bumps that are in between each V. This is the one closest to our hook. We're not gonna go into that guy. We're gonna skip this one and we're gonna put our hook in this one over here. So we're gonna go right into that. And that's where we're gonna put our single crochet. That's one. And we're gonna do that all the way down until we get 40 single crochets in the back bumps.
39, and then the last one is 40. Then the pattern says to chain one, turn your work. For row two, we will be going back down this way, and it's just 40 single crochets all the way back down, and we're going to do that until we get nine total rows. So that was one, so we have eight more to go. And this time you're going just under both loops of the V like a normal single crochet, only that first row is a little bit different. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get nine rows of 40 single crochets, chain one and turn. And then after I get nine, we are going to make our little cave for the drawstring to go through. But I will do this off camera and come back and show you how to do that part. I just finished row nine, and now we are going to make our little tunnel. And to do that, it's really simple. We're just gonna fold our work in half hot dog style like this. And then actually just kidding, we're gonna go like this. <laughs> Fold it like this so your working yarn is on the side that's facing you. Hot dog style. Okay, and then we are gonna go I just chained one at the end of row nine I chained one. So now we are going to insert our hook into the first stitch like you would if he's going to do a row 10 and then we're going to insert our hook into this stitch right here next to the starting yarn so we're going under both and that's where we're going to put our single crochet for one and then we're going to do two in this guy, and so under that one, and then under the matching one in the other side. Two. And then we're just going to do that all the way down until we get 40 single crochets, making sure to line up the stitch that's on the front side with the stitch that's on the back side so they are together and so your tunnel doesn't get wonky. I learned this technique when I was learning how to do Tunisian crochet back in uni season of this year, well the end of uni season from last year. I was working the Betta Beanie by a friend of mine and her business name slips my mind right now which is crazy because I talked about her so much back in uni season but I will tag her below. And I learned this technique from that pattern. It's a really fun pattern to make a double brim Tunisian knit stitch beanie so it looks knitted. And I made so many last winter because I loved it. If you are interested in making your own betta beanie, the pattern is going to be linked in the description below for you guys. And it is a free pattern by Happily Yarn After, so you all can go and grab that after you finish this video. While I am finishing this row up in super fast speed, I wanted to take a second to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been posting lots of crochet pattern videos and I have more in the future coming. But I have also posted some DIY and tutorial type videos that will help you in crochet as a hobby and as a business. It looks like I'm about finished joining this row together, so let's go back to regular human speed and finish this pattern. We are almost to the end here, joining our tunnel. And then we are going to chain one. And now I'm just gonna pull up a loop real quick so I can show you guys a little trick that I started doing. Um, I like to take this tail, and this is the front side of my work where we just can see the stitches that we just made. I like to flip it over to the back side and then take my tail and make like a weird 
likely little miss. So that way I know this is the wrong side because when we go to join them with our two pieces, we are going to want to know which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side for joining purposes. And having that mess helps you remember, oh, that mess bit, that's the wrong side. Okay, now we're going to chain one and turn our work. And we are just going to continue to crochet 40 single crochets all the way down the row, chain one and turn until we get a total of 47 rows. So the row, the joining row we just did counts as one. And we're going to keep doing this for 46 more rows until we get a total of 47 rows. And then you can cut your yarn. And then we will work on the assembly. After you do all of your rows, you will get something that looks like this. So I will do that off camera and then we will come back and work on the assembly. Now we are going to make our four spikes that's going to go on the back of the bag and look like little dinosaur spikes. You will still need the same 4.5 millimeter hook, a different color of yarn, and then some scrap yarn or a stitch marker that you can use to mark your spot. These are going to be made in the round and we're going to start with a magic circle. If you don't know how to do the magic circle, you can do the chain three and then join it together and crochet inside that loop. Um, but I recommend the magic circle. So to make a magic circle, you're going to wrap the yarn around your fingers and then cross it right there and then stick your thumb there to hold it and let it drop behind this guy. Insert your hook, grab the part that you let drop and pull up a loop and try not to split your yarn. Okay, and then you're just gonna adjust your hands a little bit and chain one. Now we're gonna single crochet six right into the center of the magic circle. So one, two, three, four, five, Six. Now we're going to grab our tail over here and just pull it closed. And then I'm going to put my stitch yarn in that very last number six single crochet that we did. So I know that's the last stitch that I need to be working in. And now for the row two, we are going to increase in the first stitch. So we're just putting our hook right back into that first stitch. We're going to do two single crochets. One, two in the same stitch for an increase. Then we're going to do two single crochets, one in each stitch one, two, and then we're going to do another increase here. So two in the same stitch. And then two more for a total of eight. One, and now I can see the last one. I'm at the last one and it's my eighth stitch, so I'm in the right spot. And then I'm just going to pull up a loop and grab my scrap yarn so I know that's my new last spot. Row three, we are going to increase to 10. So we're gonna put two single crochets in the first spot. One, two, now we're gonna single crochet three. One, two, three, increase again. One, two, and then single crochet three. The last stitch is in the right spot. And I am going to pull 
my scrap yarn up into that stitch because that's the last spot. That row has 10. The next row is going to have 12. Start by putting an increase in the first stitch. Then single crochet four. and then increase in the next stitch and single crochet four again. One, two, three, four. Move up our scrap yarn or your stitch marker if you're using a stitch marker. And now we can go ahead and flip it right side out. It's starting to curl on us so that way we know it's gonna stay. That's right side out. And the next row is going to have 16 stitches. So we're going to put two in that next stitch right there. And two. Then we're going to single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry, this row is going to have 14, not 16. Increase and then single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. Next row is going to be 16. So now we're going to increase. One, two, single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six, increase, one, two, and then single crochet six, one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. I'm going to pull my yarn up through that stitch. The next row is going to have 18. Increase in the first stitch. One, two, single crochet seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Increase in the next stitch. And then single crochet seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, perfect. Move up our scrap yarn. This next row is going to be our last increase row. So we're going to go for 20, increase in the first stitch, single crochet eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, increase in the next stitch, one, two, and then single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have 20 single crochets, and for the last row, we're just going to single crochet one in each stitch around for another count of 20. One, two, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Perfect. Okay, you can pull out your scrap yarn or your stitch marker, and we can go ahead and tie off our yarn. But we're going to want to leave, you're going to want to put a slip stitch in the same stitch that you just did your last single crochet. So that's where we're going to slip stitch down. 
Here in this video clip, I am pulling a bunch of yarn to say for sewing the spikes onto the backpack, but I actually found a faster way to do that after I filmed this. So go ahead and just cut a regular size tail and sew that puppy in. You will need four of these total. Now we are going to make our backpack drawstring straps. You will need your G 4.0 millimeter hook. It's smaller than the one we were using, and it's actually kind of small for this yarn, um, but I wanted the straps to be daintier. To make the straps, we're going to be making an eye cord, and there is a tool to do this. I don't have the tool, so we're just going to be doing it by hand. Start by making a slip knot and chain three. If you've never made one of these before, it's going to take you a little bit. I mean, it took me a little bit to get the hang of it, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad and it's actually kind of relaxing. So we're gonna chain three. With this loop on our hook, you're gonna insert into the second chain that we crocheted, grab our yarn and pull up a loop, insert into the third chain, or I guess it was the first one, grab our yarn, pull up a loop. Now here comes the tricky part. You are going to take your hook back out of the those two loops right there, leaving this one on the hook, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through that loop, put our hook back into this loop, grab our yarn, pull through, put our hook back into this loop, grab our yarn, pull through. Okay, and then just give this a tug. We're going to do that again, and we're going to do that until our cord is about 49 inches long. And you're going to need to make two of these. So let's do that again. Take our hook out of those two right there, leaving this one still on the hook. Grab your yarn, pull through the one that's on your hook, insert back into this guy. Grab your yarn, pull through. See, see how I split my yarn right there? That's why this hook size is a little dainty for the yarn. It's a little frustrating, but I want it small. Into the first one, grab our yarn, pull up our loop, and then give it a tug. And once it gets going, you'll be able to see it's like a tube, or like a circular cylinder, that's the word. Okay, so take it out of these two, just like that, grab our yarn, insert back into here, grab our yarn, and then grab our yarn and pull through. Okay, give that a tug, and you can see the stitches create this cylinder shape, which makes a very good strap for your backpack. I will link another video tutorial by my friend Nikki in the description. She made a tutorial for this um, eye cord as well, and you might find hers more helpful. You just keep doing that until your cord is about 49 inches long, and you're going to make two of these. Once you get the hang of it, and you can watch something or listen to something while you are crocheting, you're welcome to check out my other videos, or you can check out my favorite podcast, which is Simple Pin Media, and it talks about how to use Pinterest to grow your business specifically she talks a lot about to get traffic to your blog but she talks about other types of businesses as well and after we finish both of my straps I will come back and we will assemble everything together now that we have all of our pieces it is time for us to assemble our backpack together 
As you can see here in this part of the video, I still haven't found out my new way of attaching the spikes, so they still have those very long tails that are now unnecessary. So your spikes at this point should have all of the tails sewn in, the one at the beginning where you did the magic circle, and the one where I have super long ones, because you're not going to need that. Um, we have two front and back pieces, two eye cords for the drawstring, and four little spikes to go on the back. All right, we are going to start by attaching our spikes. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find the center of your back piece of your backpack, which right now at this point, either piece can be your back piece. Um, you know that this is the wrong side. That's gonna be the side that you hide on the inside of your backpack. So your spikes need to go on the side that does not have your little um, tail mess here or a stitch marker if you chose to do that. And to find the center, this is a little trick that worked for me when I was designing the pattern. If you fold your backpack piece in half, hot dog style. Me again. <laughs> I found out after recording this that if you use a binder clip to hold up, your so backpack edges, piece folded so together, it will help everything stay lined up easier. Uh, might save you a little bit of a headache. So quick tip, binder clips. Now we're going to use a handy. contrasting color of yarn. I chose purple. It was what was closest to me. And your tapestry needle. And we are just going to make a running stitch right down this crease here. So I'm going to come from the inside. Keeping this lined up, and I'm gonna, you can see it's coming out. Let me zoom in for you. You can see it's coming out at the center. So then we're gonna just go right back in on in the center and then come right back out again. Making sure not to pick up any random threads. We're just using this as a placeholder so we can see where the middle is easily. Okay, just do that all the way down. Okay, now we're gonna open it and see if that's a straight line. If any of them were way off, I would go back and move them, but I think that's pretty good. So we're gonna go with this. But now I'm going to show you my new idea for the spikes. Grab your first triangle and we're going to, let me get these out of the way. Going to insert our hook near where the yarn was, like circle was ended when we were making our triangles. Insert your hook right there. Grab your yarn and chain one. Now what we're gonna do is slip stitch all the way down the length of the triangle. So go right back into that same spot where we just was at and go through both the front and back. So this is the front, this is the back. Go through both those stitches and then just slip stitch. First one's a little weird. Okay, then after that it's gonna be much faster. Two, three, Four, and you can tell that it gives you a really nice flat surface to use for when we go to attach these guys to the backpack. And also, this is going to make our spikes one continuous line, so we don't have to worry about making sure they're lined up properly. See how, they, how you have this nice flat space that we can work on now when we go to attach it to the backpack? So after we do this one, we just keep a going. Pick up your next one and go where the um, end of the row is. It looks a little wonky. Insert your hook, insert your hook, and slip stitch all the way down, making sure to go through both the front and back pieces. It's really simple and kind of satisfying to do. 
Okay, pick up your next one. And you're just going to have a little row of dinosaur spikes. Oops. Lord have mercy. And one more dinosaur spike. See how we have this nice little row? And this will make attaching so much easier. I hope, because I haven't tried it yet. But it should work, theoretically. Okay. Okay, and now we can tie off. I already cut my yarn, and so you can just tie off and cut your yarn if you haven't. And leave a long tail. This is probably literally double the length that I need, but I just wanted to have, I'd rather have more than, too much than not enough. I'm going to go ahead and sew in this guy, and then we are going to attach the spikes onto our back piece of our backpack. All right, I'm putting my long tail onto my tapestry needle. I already sewed in this tail. Now I'm going to grab my backpack with my thread that is already there marking the center point. And we are basically just going to line our spikes up starting at the crease right here just at the bottom of the, the tunnel. So right at the very tip of that we're going to use this is going to go just like this. That's what we're going for here. So we're going to start by going in, and I'll probably zoom in for you guys. Okay, we are going to go in right here where this one's coming out at, so I'm going to just pull that guy out and go in right there, right at the base of the tunnel, and pull it through. And I know my tail is really long. I hate losing it, yarn chicken, so that's why I make them super, super long. Okay, and now we are going to go through the spike, just in this side, out the other, and then pull it through. And then as we pull it, it will begin to tighten down onto the backpack. Next, we go into the backpack. So I'm going to go right here. Pull it all the way out so it's nice and taut. And then back through the spike. All the way through it. And then after this one, we will need to start laying our spike, big spike strip down like this. And the good news about this method instead of the other way is you can see where your spikes are going to be. You know that you were up far enough and this guy's gonna have enough room and there's no guessing, you just do. I'll do a few more stitches with you guys here and then I will do the rest off camera and show you what it looks like when it's completely done. But if I'm, while I'm working on it, if something seems weird or I have to get a little creative, I will pop back on here and show you. Just gonna keep going through the backpack, then through oh. the spike. all the way down the full length of the backpack. Okay, now we are back. We are all on the same page. No more weird video chopping and me just popping in on the screen. I just finished attaching the spikes to the backpack with the technique that I just showed you, the newer one. Um, and this is what it will look like once they're all on there. This is the other side. I still have this tail to sew in. Now I'm going to join the back piece and the front piece of the backpack together. So these are going to be done wrong sides facing out. So my little spikes, I'm just going to lay them down so they're not sticking up. And lay my backpack 
top piece right on my backpack back piece. I will be using my 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and I'm going to be using the join as you go method to attach this guy, these guys together. To do that, we're basically lining up these stitches with the matching one on the other side. Now, since we are working on opposite sides of the rows, and you can see that because our tails are on opposite ends, this side is going to be at the beginning of a row, and it's going to match with this side's end of the row. So where we're going to stick our hook is going to look a little different, but that's okay because it helps you know that you are in the right spot. So we're going to add our yarn right here into this guy, and this is a bar space right here, right at the base of the tunnel. And then we're going to pick up our other piece, and we should be going into this hole right here. So we got a bar on this one, so we're looking for a hole on this one. That's the very base of the tunnel, and we're just going to put a single crochet right there. Just like that. Now we're going to take our hook out of our yarn, out of the loop, go back into this bar space where we just joined the yarn, go back in there, grab the loop again, and pull it through. So that's one. One join as you go stitch. Now the next one we're going to go for the second stitch. We're going to go down into here and it should look like a bar because the previous one looked like a, like a hole. So we're going to go under the bar do a single crochet, then we're going to pull our hook out and we should be finding a hole now. There's the hole. Grab our yarn again and pull it through. That's two. Next should be a hole. There it is. Single crochet, then a, a bar. Under the bar, grab our yarn, pull it through. And we're going to keep doing that all the way down until we get to the bottom corner. And then we're going to go across the bottom of the bag and then back up the right hand side. I actually learned this join as you go method when I did a baby blanket like three or four years ago. It's the Trillis and Chevron baby blanket. It's the cutest baby blanket pattern I've ever seen. I will link that below for you guys. It's from a different designer. And I learned this method from making that baby blanket and now I use it every chance that I get. It's much faster for me now since I do it so often and it also makes for a really pretty join. It's great for baby blankets because it's super flat but it's also really clean for something like this. So I'm just gonna continue all the way down this uh, left-hand side of the bag, and then I'll come back when I get to the bottom. Alrighty, I just finished this whole side of the backpack, and now I'm down across the bottom. And this side's a little easier because we don't have to worry about um, making our own stitches like we were doing along the sides. These we actually have nice neat stitches to go into from when we did the rows. So there's, it's made just the exact same way. We're going to single crochet into the first stitch on the bottom piece and then we're going to take our hook out and pull the yarn through the first stitch on the top piece. Single crochet into the second stitch on the bottom piece pull it through the second stitch on the top piece. It's much easier when you have actual stitches you can go into. And I will just do this all the way across the bottom of the bag and meet you back to go back up the top of the right side. I am coming up on the last few stitches here across the bottom and then we will just be going right back up the other side and then we can cut our yarn and tie off and sew in our tails. And last
last one, pull it through. Okay, and back up the other side. So I'm just gonna turn and go this way now. Looking for a bar right here. Single crochet into the bar. Now I'm looking for a hole, which is right here. Pull it through. Now I'm looking for a hole. There it is. Single crochet, looking for a bar right there. There's my bar. Mm, there's my hole. Do this all the way down. And once we get to the top, cut your yarn and tie off. Then we can sew in all of our tails and get ready to attach the straps. I just finished closing up this last side of the bag. Now I'm just gonna cut my yarn and tie off and then I will sew that in with my tapestry needle here in a minute but I wanted to show you what it looks like like un unveil it ta-da isn't that cute just a little finagling There we go. And you can see how pretty of a seam the join as you go method makes. I love it. I use it for everything. Perfect. Now let's add the straps. I'm gonna just flip it around here. Okay, so to attach the straps, we're going to put this guy in here and then around and out the other side like this. And we're going to put this guy in here and around out the other side like this. So that way when you pull them, the two ends come together and make it closed. Okay, the easiest way I have found to thread the straps through the tunnel is with a crochet hook that's not rubber feeling like this so like a metal one or these wood ones are fine and I'm just going to stick it through the side come out the other side and grab the yarn sometimes it takes me a few tries and send it back through hopefully the yarn is still looped when my hook comes out the other side almost <laughs> I'm going to try again Maybe if I grab the actual chain thingy, the I cord, grab a hold of it. There we go, that's much smarter. Okay, so grab the I cord with your hook. Pull it all the way through, ah, easy peasy. Look how easy that was. Now we're gonna go around and back down this side. So we stick our hook through the other side, scrunch it onto our hook, put it into the eye cord. It's a little tricky to do all at once. If you had another human to help you hold things, that would be easier. Okay, grabbed it. Now I'm gonna pull it through and out the other side. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. See how I kind of like made that all wonky? You're not even gonna see that. I'll show you. No big deal. Okay, so the next one is gonna go like this. So we will go in this way and then around and out this way. Okay. Grab it. Okay, pull it through. And 
then back through this way. So our tails are like even down here at the bottom, as close to even as we can get. It's kind of like a circle. So, And then we are going to pull them onto the inside of the bag from down here at the bottom. And inside the bag we're going to knot it. So this is what we're going for. We will pull it in one through this side of the seam, one through this side of the seam, and then knot them together. And then I will sew these tails in, obviously. So let's just take this and flip it inside out again. So we can see what we're doing. And we can use this guy this time. So grab our tails, take it inside the bag. Just kind of feel for what you're doing. There's our seam. We're gonna go like one, two rows down, grab it, pull it through, and then on the other side of our seam, right there, for this guy. So stick it down in there. Feel for it. Okay, there we go. And I'm just checking to make sure it's not all weird inside there. One side is a little longer than the other. There we go. And now I'm just going to knot these. And try to get it near the very tips if you can so you don't lose a whole lot of length okay that side's done well gotta close cut these and sew them in <laughs> promise I will do that let me make sure that looks right yeah, see? Looks good. There we go. Perfect. Now the other side. After you sew in your tails, your bag will be all ready. I love it. Isn't this so cute? I will get my daughter to let me take her some pictures in this guy and in the other one too and post them here at the end of the video so you can see them. I am obsessed with this design. I hope you guys love this crochet pattern. Um, I think it turned out really super cute and Ava, my daughter, she loves them. She wants one in every color. Um, so I'm gonna have to get on the ball with that. Also be sure to check out the challenge videos that Taylor and I both did. I will link them below for you. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the pattern. Hit that subscribe button if you want more awesome crochet pattern videos. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram too because Instagram's my jam. See y'all later.